Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. I am Kevin Duke with HPE GreenLake Cloud Services, and welcome to the HP GreenLake for Private Cloud session. I am joined today by Raj Mistry and Steve Showalter, who will walk us through today's presentation and demonstration. We'd like to keep this session interactive, so please submit your questions in the chat window. We have subject matter experts on the line to answer your questions. So with that, I'll hand over to Raj. Cool, thanks, Kevin. So cloud is now fast becoming a reality. We say as HPE and what our customers say to us that it's not an expectation anymore. It's an absolute necessity. So the research and the stats that you see on the screen just kind of like prove that over the last five to six years, organizations, enterprises are adopting cloud, be it in the data center, but the hyperscalers are a mixture of both. But the interesting thing that we see now is a moving investment to basically increase private cloud capability. Uh, and in that vein, what we've done with Greenlight Cloud Services is create a rich portfolio that delivers that cloud-like experience either at the edge in your data center co-location that actually matches and actually embraces the work that you do with the hyperscalers. What we're doing here is we're providing self-service capability, elasticity in the means in the way that you would use this and the way that you would flex things up and down. More importantly, all of this is run and operated for you, which comes true to what we say in terms of delivering that cloud experience within those locations, be they the edge, the data center, or the colo. Um, GreenLake for Private Cloud was initially launched uh, in summer 2020. It was the first iteration of what we call the GreenLake platforms. What we're trying to do with this element of the GreenLake Cloud Services portfolio is four things, which is eliminate the complexity of building things that live, breathe, behave, and act like in a cloud-like manner in the data center, because this is hard. Yeah, the visibility around the way that you would manage and understand and run and operate certain elements of that cloud. Uh, the governance and the compliance piece, which is important, especially when it comes to things like applying policies, et cetera, that you would have. And then the skills gap that we do from a managed services perspective that takes things off. So from an infrastructure standpoint, beginning at the left, world-class HPE compute storage network switches embracing the virtualization and the software defined networking layer together with a pretty rich cloud automation and orchestration portal all wrapped up for you pre-built pre-architected removing complexity increasing time to value uh, and and uh, the the actual delivery time scales if we move to the actual experience all of this is actually uh, embracing the way that you would access these uh, solutions so in through greenlake central uh, that's where your as a service experience begins with HPE. It's your entry point into the, the world of as a service. From here onwards, you would actually access that service. So from, uh, from a private cloud standpoint, this is where you would initiate the cloud management portal. And then you would begin either working in that in the roles of either administrator, consumer, et cetera. Lastly, you know, pushing buttons and provisioning stuff is really easy. What a lot of our focus is, is in the post provisioning processes of understanding, is it turned on, is it off? How much is it costing me? Am I getting the most efficiency out of it? Am I running out of capacity to deliver services to my users? All of this is finally wrapped up with the managed platform capability, which means you now have to understand and treat Hewlett Packard Enterprise as an MSP and a cloud provider within your data center we take care of the infrastructure, the software, and the experience. Your entry point is at the cloud management layer. That's how we get you going. Hey Raj, I know we made some announcements earlier today about a new scalable form factor version of private cloud. I was wondering if maybe you could talk about how that extends the value proposition for customers. Oh, good question, Steve. Um, so what the scalable form factor is really is, is us looking at market feedback, understanding what our customers are and bringing this as a entry point into the smaller and the more medium enterprise who are looking to deliver private cloud capabilities 
you know, making it easier for them to embrace it and then scale. The other difference is, is the way that we actually have flexibility in the way that that cloud solution now grows. So different options uh, available to customers in terms of what they want to do. We typically talk as a team and to our customers about different roles. So we have a notion of the cloud administrator or the cloud operator. This is more of your classic kind of like administrative role. So this is where our customers would come in right at the cloud management layer and begin configuring their environment, networking services, et cetera. From here onwards, it's the cloud consumer. So applications, line, application developers, lines of business, et cetera. They're presented with a self-service catalog for them to come and provision stuff could be normal VMs, it could be kind of like applications, depending on what the administrators or the operators have chosen to present to them. Lastly, it's around how do I understand what's going on in the environment? So the focus, as I mentioned beforehand, visibility to then understand what's happening to then optimize later. So addressing the needs of lines of business or IT leaders and business leaders within our customer base. All of this then begins from our central point of access, which is GreenLake Central. From here, services and solutions that customers subscribe to are presented. Depending on who you are, your privileges, your role within the actual environment, you get different options. So a cloud administrator may see different things in central because they require administrative functions within the cloud environment. A consumer, such as me, may have limited views in central, access a service, but I can basically only read or provision set things that are done for me. From a lines of business or from an IT leadership perspective, it's about providing predictive billing, visibility into cost, understanding from a planning standpoint and allowing people to optimize at ease and speed. Yeah. So central is where your journey begins. And then from within there, you launch the necessary service that you've subscribed to. Today's focus is the private cloud. So who is this uh, solution built for, Raj? Uh, initially, we started off at the large enterprise level, Kevin. But what we've done, as we do as HPE, is listen to our customers. So we've reintroduced and we're launching today the scalable form factor to address the needs of a, a multitude of clients both large and small enable people to have different kind of like deployment types so remote office branch office for the larger customers and for those smaller enterprises wanting to begin their private cloud journey a great way for them to do that with hpe all right thank you um how does a customer access the private cloud environment uh, via GreenLake Central, Kevin, great question. That's our entry point for any of the services. Uh, easier to see later on in the demo that Steve's going to walk through. Uh, it's where customers come in and depending on role, access, privilege, rights, etc., you are presented with your services. And from within there, you access the service depending on the role that's being assigned to you. So Steve, why don't you show us a little bit about what a cloud administrator, a cloud operator can do within the environment? Sure, happy to Raj. As we talk to these personas or use cases, you know, our experience as Raj mentioned, will always start in GreenLake Central. So the role or persona I'm taking on here is that of an administrator of this private cloud environment. So again, I start off by logging into GreenLake Central once the stood up, service is stood up and available. Uh, within my data center, I see the GreenLake for private cloud tile, which gives me an overview of services I'm consuming and some of the things that might be running in that environment. Clicking on the tile takes me to the cloud management platform dashboard board. This is where I, as an administrator, can configure and control lots of things of the, uh, in the environment on behalf of my end users. So a couple of examples of things I might want to do first off, uh, there's an important notion of grouping that we use for access control within the environment. So I may want to organize my users into groups to control what they can see, what they can do, what sort of policies I can apply to them. Next, I probably wanna configure the underlying software defined network that Raj talked about. So again, we deliver a software defined networking capability. From within the software defined network, this is where I can create things like underlying networks, underlying distributed V switches, uh, IP address pools. Uh, I can also configure and manage software defined routers, uh, firewall rules, and some of those sorts of things within the environment. Uh, any IP address pools I have that I wanna make available to some of those underlying networks, I could manage from within here as well. Uh, 
We also feature software defined load balancing capabilities. So again, if I expect my developers or my end users to be able to provision resources that require some load balancing, I can create those load balancers, define the types of load balancing I wanna make available uh, to those end users from within here as well. Finally, I can manage keys and certificates. So if I have things like uh, key pairs or SSL certificates, again, that I wanna make available to my end users, um, I could manage all that from within here. And then one of the final things I might want to do is start to manage uh, an automation library. So a library of virtual images that I want to make available for, for my end users. Because the private cloud solution is based on VMware, I might want to just pull in some existing VMware images I have, or I might want to create some new custom images. But really, I have a central place to be able to manage that library of images. And then you know decide who has access to which images and how I want to make those available to end users to be able to provision and lifecycle manage. So that's a quick overview of some of the administrative capabilities. Uh, Kevin, any questions at this point about that capability? Yeah, I got one for you. Um, can customers bring their own tooling to the private cloud? Ah, yeah, so that's a great question. So, you know, almost every customer I talk to nowadays has made a, a large investment typically in some sort of automation tooling. And one of the things that we want to provide is the ability to surface that tooling and kind of allow customers to be able to reuse that tooling within our private cloud environment. So within the private cloud platform as an administrator, I can create all sorts of scripts and, you know, maybe some basic uh, capabilities I want to define for scripts. But I also have the ability to integrate automation platforms. So we can see in this particular environment. I've, I've onboarded a, a, a set of Ansible uh, playbooks that exist in a Git repo. Uh, I really just point the cloud management platform to that repo. It scrapes all the playbooks that it finds there, and those become available as tasks and workflows that I can use uh, after I provision VMs. So again, I can reuse that investment that I've made in automating things like application provisioning, application configuration for my end users within my environment. Okay, I got another one for you. Uh, how do customers improve control and governance of their private cloud? Yeah, so there are a couple different ways to do that. So, you know, we'll talk specifically one of the capabilities I have within uh, the cloud management platform is the ability to create uh, policies. Policies are really a way I can provide my users with, you know, self-service access to kind of go do the things that they need to do but provide some control around what they can do. So there's all sorts of policies I can create. So policies around things like if I've got certain group of users that I wanna to require to get provision approval anytime they provision something, I want an administrator to approve it. I can also limit the things that uh, maybe a group of, consu of con consumers can consume within my environment. Uh, maybe I wanna define a certain host name rule. So rather than create your own host names, I have a rule I want applied. Um, if tagging and showback is important, I might wanna force some tags within my environment and say, hey, anybody who provisions something needs to provide me a value for this tag. And then I can de define how that applies within the environment. So hopefully that answers some questions and gives you a feel of how these cloud administrators would work within the environment to be, to be able to manage the overall environment itself. Perfect. Thanks, Steve. So what we've just described and seen is, is the ability for a cloud administrator to A, do day one tasks, set things up, set some services up, and more importantly, apply some rules, controls, and governance. So it keeps users safe and it keeps IT happy, really. So let's say I'm Raj, I'm the head of applications, and I've got a team of developers. So I'm now going to come in as a consumer. Can you show me what I can do as a consumer, please, sir? Sure, Raj. So again, just like with the administrative use case we talked about as a, as a cloud consumer, my experience starts in GreenLake Central. So once I'm logged into GreenLake Central, if I've been provided access to the environment by my administrators, I see the GreenLake for private cloud tile, and I click on it to get to the cloud management platform, just like the administrator you use. Now, I probably see a lot less because I probably have a lot less capabilities here. Uh, but one of the first places I probably want to go is take a look at, you know, when it, what instances have been provisioned and maybe provision an instance on my own. So, you know, instance provisioning is very simple. Really, it's just a few clicks and answer a few questions. Uh, so in this case, if I have access to multiple groups, so kind of that logical separation that I talked about, I'd first pick, you know, which group is this a part of? Uh, again, in my particular case, I can provide a free form name because that's the policy that's been set up for me. Um, I've got a forced tag, right? So I have to provide a tag or a label that tells me what, uh, what, what area this is a part of. And as I continue to drill down, now I get to a point where I can select my image based on the images that have been made, made available to me. 
Um, I can choose a size of a VM. So we have sort of some pre-provisioned sizes that my administrators have made available to me. And in some cases I can customize some things within those sizes or, or maybe I can't again, just depending on how this was created. Select a network that I wanna to connect to uh, and provide a few other options. One of the things I do wanna talk about is this notion of tagging. Tagging is very important from a showback perspective. And we'll talk about when we get to cost analysis, how we can use any tags that get applied here to be able to do some showback reporting later. So if I want to provide a tag for an owner to make sure I can always write a report that says, show me everything Steve has consumed, I've got the ability to provide those tags here. And again, through a policy, I can make those tags required. A couple other choices I have, any of that available automation that maybe my administrators have made available, I can run here. Uh, I can select some scaling of my application, maybe go ahead and auto select a backup schedule, manage some lifecycle actions. If maybe this VM only needs to run you know, during weekdays and I don't need it on the weekends, I can have it automatically shut down, start up. And at the end, just click on complete uh, and my VM is often being built. And then, you know, once my VMs are up and running, I've got access to be able to manage those VMs on a running basis. So, you know, if I have a VM that's running and I want to be able to manage it, very simple, again, from within the cloud management platform to go take a look at, you know, maybe how this VM is performing. Maybe I want to log into the console. Maybe I want to take a look at the log stash that, you know, log, log error messages that this, this VM has created. Or maybe I just want to stop it, start it, create an image from it, or maybe, you know, after I've provisioned it, run some of those workflows on it. As an as a end user, I've got the capability to kind of fully manage and fully control those VMs once I have them up and running. So that's a quick overview of that cloud consumer use case. Uh, Kevin, do you have any questions right now about that use case? Yeah, I do. Uh, cloud consumers today want more than a VM. So how can a private cloud deliver more value for cloud consumers? Yeah, so that's a great question. So we talked a little bit about the, the cloud management platform's ability to integrate with existing automation for things like uh, application installation and configuration. Uh, but one thing I didn't talk about is kind of an alternate way we can use that. And that's through this notion of blueprints. So within the cloud management platform, I as a developer or as an administrator can set up blueprints, which are really uh, very complex applications. These could be multi-node, multi-tier applications uh, where each tier may have have a different application installed, they may be load balanced, all those sorts of things. And I can stitch all those together and make them available as a catalog item. It's just kind of one simple catalog item for an end user to consume. So they don't have to understand all the complexity or all the multiple nodes or all the workflows required on the back end to provide that service. I've already done all that hard work. I advertise it to them and they don't have to know again, in this particular case, I've got a web tier made up of a couple VMs, a database tier made up of a couple VMs. Uh, there's some automation running maybe through those Ansible playbooks uh, in, in the back end to make all those things happen. Really as an end user, I just say, hey, I, I want one of these applications. Uh, I may need to answer a few questions uh, depending on you know how the application or the blueprint is built. And then I could push that out as an entire application. And again, I don't have to understand all the complexities that make up that multi-node, multi-tier application on the, in the background. Steve, that's really cool. So life is as good as it can be. So, right. So we've pushed some buttons, we've set some stuff up, we've provisioned some stuff. So right at the beginning, you know, we spoke about the post provisioning stuff. So how do we actually manage the costs and, and also look at the usage within the environment, which is also important to our customers? Yeah, so it's a great question, Raj. So, you know, obviously customers want to understand what their overall green link consumption is, what their bill is, how all those things relate together. And then they probably want to do much more detailed cost analysis as well. So the good news here, we provide all this tooling and all this is available right through GreenLake Central. So a couple of the tiles that you'll see in GreenLake Central tie into the private cloud solution, just like they would any other GreenLake solution. So if I want to see overall what I've consumed uh, within my private cloud uh, as a GreenLake resource, I can drill down to understand, hey, what was actually metered as what I consumed? How did that relate to my GreenLake rate card? You know, how did that how did that create the number that appeared on my GreenLake bill for this particular service at the end of the month? Uh, I've also got the tools to do capacity planning. Again, just like every other GreenLake environment, uh, we want to be able to show kind of that capacity planning view. So customers can understand kind of what they're consuming, uh, what direction that's trending, and when we need to add some, we may, may need to add some more additional capacity. So again, when a customer needs more, it's already there and ready to go. They just start to consume it and pay for it as a part of their GreenLake bill. So GreenLake customers have a, a dedicated account team that kind of works with them to keep an eye on that capacity. And again, make sure we're working 
with customers to make the right decisions about when is the right time to add additional capacity to the environment. And then finally, you know, our customers also get access to consumption analytics for much more detailed cost reporting. So within consumption analytics, I can take advantage of the, those tags that I talked about previously. So here's a report I created where I wanna see my private cloud consumption and use really broken down by cost center and by the VMs that my users within each of those cost centers is consuming. So I wrote a report to do some showback costing based on those tags. So in this particular case, I can tell, for example, the Colo Engineer Cost Center that, hey, you, you over the last month, you've consumed 32 uh, elements within the private cloud environment. You know, your total cost for that was $860. And, and I can give them the ability to, you know, if they want, drill down on this. So, you know, now they'll see every individual VM that was provisioned, uh, where it ran, when it ran. And in this particular case, I've broken down the cost between compute and storage because I really wanted to see those separately as separate line items. But, you know, really give customers the ability to do whatever showback or chargeback reporting makes sense within their organization based on the tags they want to apply and how they want to be able to show and consume those costs. So, Kevin, any questions about uh, sort of this cost analysis use case? Yeah. Is there a way to proactively monitor consumption of the private cloud environment? Yeah, so we actually provide a couple different ways to do that. Uh, one right within consumption analytics that we talked about, one of the capabilities I have is, is the ability to set a budget. So in this particular case, I've set a budget, again, kind of by that cost center that I can take a look at, hey, you know, what are all these cost centers consuming within this private cloud environment? Uh, and how does that relate to, you know, what maybe a, an amount that I've given them to be able to use? So I, I can take a look at and see, hey, in the current period, you know, I've got one uh, cost center that's over budget, two that are under budget and take a look at their historical use as well. Going back to the cloud management platform, I also have more of a hard way to be able to set those consumption boundaries uh, by using a policy. So again, if I want to create a policy uh, that says, hey, you know, Steve can only have 20 VMs. Uh, once he's provisioned those 20 VMs, he can't have any more. Um, you know, he's got to come back and ask for more. And again, you know, when I create this policy, I could apply it to a group or an individual user, just kind of based on how I want to put those guardrails around that environment and then sort of do that around that environment. So there's kind of a, a way to do this in more of a soft way based on cost to understand budgets and get notifications when I get close to my budget limits, or more of a hard way to actually, you know, be able to limit resources that, that customers can consume within the environment itself. So with that, Raj, I'll throw it back to you. Cool. Thanks, Steve. So just to wrap up, really, you know, Steve and Kevin, thank you for the great demonstration in the chat, really. Um, a few things for the audience and our customers uh, to understand. What we're now doing with GreenLake for Private Cloud and other platform solutions is helping you to get started really, really quickly, allowing you to begin your journey with us at the right level. And then you can scale depending on how you're actually managing your transformation, be it from an infrastructure standpoint, application standpoint, or you're looking to basically just modernize the way that you deliver services back out to your internal users. The other side of it is, is the important fact that we now act and behave very much like a cloud. So because we run those environments for you, we eliminate the complexity of feeding and watering, all the infrastructure, the configuration and the updates of the software layer, it leaves you free to basically deliver the services like Steve has just shown. The other side of it, final point, is it's all usage based. Uh, so again, lowering kind of like the initial investment risk for you guys, allowing you to uh, benefit from the way that we've actually integrated these solutions and technologies so you can just embrace them and take advantage of them. Excellent. Thank you, Raj. Um, so I would like to thank you all for attending today. Thank you, Raj and Steve, for a brilliant demonstration. If you would like more information or like to speak to someone directly, then please fill out the poll by clicking on the poll option at the top of the chat box. So in closing, if you are interested in HPE GreenLake for private cloud, then please start a trial. It's easy. Thank you. Thank you all. And goodbye for now.